So I've got a little modeling challenge for you guys and before we even hop into the tutorial on how to make this, pause the video, use this image as a reference and see if you can create it on your own. I will give you a hint, it has to do with my last tutorial on hacking topology. So pause the video, give it a go, see if you're able to create this shape. If you are, awesome. If not, no worries. I'm going to show you the techniques and approach. If you're brand new to hard surface modeling, make sure you pick up our free hard surface modeling jumpstart course over on our website. It's been downloaded by over 30,000 people and is a great way to get started with modeling and hard surface and blender. I'll link that in the description. So the first thing we need to do is we need to start with a basic sphere. So we're going to go ahead and delete out the default cube, press shift A to add in a UV sphere. And let's press Control one on the keyboard to add a level of subdivision to make it smoother. And then right click and shade smooth. Now I'm just going to go ahead and apply the sub D modifier over here because I just want to have a nice smooth sphere just like this. Also, I'd recommend going here, turning on matte cap for some different shading and also copying my cavity settings here. So now what we need to do is we need to basically create the general form. And if you don't remember what the object looks like, I'll have my editor throw a screenshot back on the screen again so you can use it as a reference. But basically what we need to do here is we need to find a way to attach those handles here to the sphere. And like I said, this is very similar to my recent video on hacking topology. So make sure you watch that one. So we're going to go ahead and take the sphere and what I want to do before I add the handles is I want to cut off the top a little bit and also the bottom. You could do this with a basic boolean or you could just use box cutter. So I'm going to go in here with box cutter and we're going to go in and we're going to cut, I don't know, right to about here. And then what I want to do is I want to press alt X with hard ops to mirror the object. If you're not using hard ops, you could just go in here and use a mirror modifier set to the z-axis and just um, tick on those two settings then we can go ahead apply the balloon and also apply the mirror modifier so now we basically have this result right here so now what i want to do is this almost looks like i might have cut it a bit too far but i think it'll be okay so now what i want to do is i want to add in a cube and i want to scale this cube a bit on the y and then a little bit on the Z and I want to more or less line this um, scaled cube with the top face here, this top edge. So we're going to scale that right to about there. And you don't have to be perfectly accurate because what we can do is we can go into face mode, select the top face, go here into vertex snap. And then if we grab it, press the Z to go on the Z axis and then hold control, we can snap it right there to that top face. Same for the bottom here, we'll just snap it. And now we're going to basically have this result and we can also scale this up just a little bit more so those handles are kind of more extended just like that now the trick here is to fuse this object to this one because what we need to do is we need to add in a bevel between these two objects right around this line but if we go into edit mode we don't have anything fused together so to do that it's very simple we're going to select these two objects with the shift key and we're just going to run a union boolean if you're doing this in vanilla blender, you can just go here to boolean, choose this object and then go to union. Make sure you're set to exact or it might not work. But if you're a hard ops user like me, you can just go in here and shift select both of them, press Q, booleans and then union. So again, let's just um, make sure we're set to exact because we are on the same plane. You can kind of see the top face of this scaled cube is on the same face as the sphere which means we need to use the exact solver it's going to give us better results so i'm going to go ahead and apply the balloon and yep looks good to me the shading is a little bit weird so feel free to come in here turn on auto smooth if you haven't already then just slightly adjust the angle until it catches everything and now if we go into face mode you're going to see the topology here on the top it's a little bit messy so here's a pretty cool trick. If you select one face and then press shift G and go to coplanar, it'll select every single face that is on that same plane. So now what we can do is delete the faces with the X key 
And just to clean up this extra junk here, I would highly recommend installing the free machine tools add-on because what you can do, not only can you go in and out of edit mode quickly, you can also clean up extra geometry floating around by pressing the three key on the keyboard. So now once all of that is cleaned up, I can just go into edge mode, alt click these faces here on the top and press the F key, just like that. And then for the bottom, I don't really have to do the same thing to the bottom. I can simply symmetrize with Alt X if you have Mesh Machine. Otherwise, you would just have to use another mirror modifier on the Z axis and then just apply that mirror. And now you're gonna have a clean, um, a clean object here. Now the trick like I showed you in my recent video on hacking topology has to do with adding a bevel in this area. So there's a few problems, and before we assess those, let me go ahead and apply the scale. You're gonna see if I try to bevel it, it almost bevels more on this direction than on this direction, as you can see. So that just means we need to press Control A in object mode and apply the scale. And now the bevel is gonna be uniform. Now the issue is when we bevel it, it starts overlapping with the surrounding geometry. So I could start dissolving some of that out, but we're still gonna have issues, as you can see. Even if I try to bevel it like this, we have problems up here on the top. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hack it. Basically, um, well there's one thing I could do here. I could bevel it, and then I could simply just run a Boolean up to the point where it was making a mess, but I, um, I wanna make sure we're retaining that same height. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm simply going to press E to extrude before we add the bevel. We're gonna extrude that. We're gonna do the same thing on the bottom, more or less, but we can just use a mirror modifier later. And now what this is gonna do, when we, whoops, when we select these edges, you can just press, um, you can hold control to select it all the way up. And now if we try to run the bevel, you're gonna see it actually follows that curvature nicely, and we can just basically run a Boolean to remove that top portion. Now, to avoid the overlapping geometry, you could dissolve these edges manually, slide them out of the way, but a much easier way to do that is with the Mesh Machine add-on by using the Offset Cut feature. So I'm gonna go ahead and press Y, go to Offset Cut. If you don't see Offset Cut and you're a Mesh Machine user, make sure you enable that here in the Mesh Machine Preferences. You have to go to the Experimental feature. Then we're just gonna go ahead and run the Offset Cut just gonna kind of tweak the distance more or less. And if we're getting some issues, let me maybe dissolve out this edge. That could have been the culprit there. We'll try again. Let's run the offset cut. And the offset cut is make a little bit messy here, but what we can do is we can increase this factor value and that'll basically give us some more resolution. And once you kind of have the size you want, you can go ahead and run your bevel just like that right click to shade auto smooth and now all we really have to do is just run a boolean on that area we just extruded up just like that basically and now we've basically hacked the topology to get the result we want more or less now i'm just going to go ahead and mirror that to the bottom as well apply the boolean operation and also apply the mirror and now we're going to have a pretty clean result like this we also need to make sure we mirror across the y to get that bevel, and then across the X as well to get the bevel on that side. And now we have this really clean transition from that little handle part with the sphere. So at this point, what we can do is we can just continue modeling. If you are bothered by the topology, I always get someone who's bothered by it. If it really bothers you, feel free to hit it with a quad remesher. It's, um, it's a paid tool, but it is very useful if you wanna quickly get in here and get cleaner topology. But for the purposes of this tutorial, I don't think it matters because I'm not particularly using this. This is a modeling exercise. So I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it alone, that's fine. So let's go ahead and take a look at that reference again if you wanna see how the final object looks. Basically, all I really did was I took these edges here and we can also press Alt and click on this edge to dissolve it out, we don't need it. And I can just select these four edges here, add in a chamfer, which is just a one segment bevel. And then on top of that chamfer, I can basically run a bevel. So we'll just do it to one side like that. 
and then we can go ahead and run a mirror modifier. And already you can kind of see we have that rough draft. We pretty much have more or less the result that we want. So the next step is to cut the hole here in the top. So what we need to do is we need to just run another Boolean. Remember, these types of modeling exercises are just step by step looking at the basic shape and then adding to it. So now we just have to think about, okay, I need a hole on the inside. So we can just use a basic Boolean operation. So I'm gonna add in a cylinder, give it like 64 vertices and we can scale this down. Let's right click to shade it auto smooth or just shade smooth. It doesn't really matter for your Boolean's. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to shift click on this object and then just run a difference Boolean just like that. And now we have this pretty cool shape, more or less what we're going for. So now what I wanna do is I wanna get that nice little indentation that we have on the inside of that reference photo. So really easy result. We just go into edit mode for our cutter, press control R, and then what we can do is we can bevel this loop, press E to extrude, right click to cancel, and then alt S to scale along the normals here. And then we can scale these on the z-axis to kind of get this dynamic shape kind of scaled down. And then all we really have to do is take these edges on the top and on the bottom and just give it a nice bevel. So control B right around there. And now we're gonna have this really clean inside. And you can see we're already pretty close to that final result. And you're gonna see the only thing we're really missing are those nice chamfers around the outside. So I'm gonna go ahead and just apply this Boolean operation. And what I'm gonna do is Alt Shift click these edges here and just give it a nice chamfer. And we can always mirror to the bottom. We'll do that in a second. And then for these outer edges here, uh, let me quickly apply our mirror modifier because you can see the mirror is actually not applied yet. Um, so let's go ahead and apply that. So now if we control click all the way around here, you could do this with Mesh Machine's L Select feature. It's a little bit quicker. You just go to L Select, it'll select it automatically. But if you don't have that, you're gonna have to go around and control click manually. Anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and take this selection, give it a small chamfer. And if you are running into these overlapping you know, geometry issues, you could just run a simple offset cut again. It's a really small offset cut. Or what you could do is you can maybe dissolve, dissolve out some of these edges here that you don't need. And you're more or less gonna have that result that you want. And just to fix the shading around here, we just have to make the auto smooth a little bit lower here until that catches. You're also gonna notice we have a slight kind of breakage right here. So what I'm gonna do real quick is just select these vertices. And as long as you have the loop tools add-on installed, which comes with Blender, you just have to enable it. What you can do is you can right click, loop tools, go to relax. And then if we press shift R a few times, it'll basically, and you can just hold shift R to repeat the command. It'll basically space this area out nicely for you. So now when we bevel that, we should have a nice clean chamfer there without like a weird distortion. And then all I need to do is just mirror to that side. And then we'll just mirror on all sides. And um, once we have that chamfer on all the different edges here, we can apply that mirror. And now we basically have that final result. Let's go ahead and rotate this on the X axis so we have it on its side. And I think the last thing we could do is maybe add in a slice here on the front. So I'm gonna add in a cylinder, going to sharpen it or to shade auto smooth. And we're just gonna rotate that cylinder. We're going to scale it down and then scale it a bit on the Y. And then we can just run a simple slice operation here on the object. And now we have this pretty cool piece. We could even add in a bevel. So add in a small bevel there, and then a small bevel right there. And if the bevel's not catching on the edge, you just have to go into the bevel angle here and just increase that a little bit. And now we basically have that final result. So I know this object looked tricky up front, but once you understand how to approach the object and how to go step by step, these types of abstract objects are really fun and really simple to create. And just to kind of end off the video, I think it would be fun to quickly add in a, um, a quad remesher. So we could go in here and remesh this piece. 
run in a sub D and then we could remesh this piece here and then run a sub D on that one and now we have this really soft shape kind of going on with perfect topology which is you know exactly what you might want if you were to deform this or something but I think that just makes it look a little bit too soft so maybe I'll just go ahead and leave it where it was before so before we end the video whenever you're modeling make sure you learn how to approach these things analytically because you might need a few tools on the side to get the job done but once you understand how to approach the object step by step these types of objects are really simple to create and they're honestly quite fun. So hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. It helps me out. And also check out some of our products over on blenderbros.com. We have plenty of hard surface modeling resources, courses, and even free products over there for you to take advantage of. Thanks one for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.